good morning good morning good evening good afternoon everyone based on your time john welcome in salesforce apex hour my name is amit chaudhary i am the founder and your host for apex hour session and today we have a great speaker emily patra with us and she is going to talk about uh, mules of composer for the salesforce so let me hand over to the emily for her introduction and the presentation over to you thanks amit and i am thrilled to be back at apex hours i've, I've done uh, presentations before as well and this is an amazing community uh, and i absolutely love coming back and and seeing you all again uh, so today i'm going to talk about uh, mulesoft's composer for salesforce it is a brand new product only been out there for a couple of months and it, i think it's one of those innovative forward thinking visionary products that we've launched i'm very excited to share with you you know today just an introduction the use cases around uh, how to use this how to think about it and why it makes life easy uh, for salesforce admins especially for, because it's a no code integration platform essentially right but before i jump into that let me introduce myself again so I'm Emily, I head the customer success strategy and architecture team at Millsoft, which is a business unit of Salesforce. Um, and I am again, very happy to be here with you. I'm also a Salesforce CTA. So I understand both sides of the world pretty well. Right, but before I get started with um, Composer, as I said, it's a brand new product and uh, there's a big exciting roadmap coming up, which I will be talking about. But that means I will be making a lot of forward looking statements. And because Salesforce is a publicly traded company, I just want to give a quick reminder to everyone that any customer should base their purchasing decisions on product and services that are currently available and not on future visions and roadmaps. Right, with that out of the way, let's get started. So before I jump into talking about um, what is Millsoft Composer and, and why did we use it or why did we release it, let's look at a common business problem or a common business scenario that we all have seen in our life, uh, which is the simple thing is in today's world, and I've talked about, you know, uh, API, API led and uh, digital transformation vision before on Apex hours, I think. And I, I talked about the composable enterprise at that time. So a composable enterprise, essentially the big enterprises of today where their data sits in multiple systems, not just Salesforce, but they could have their legacy system, they could have SAP for HANA, they could have Oracle databases, they could have even mainframes in some cases. Um, so the data is quite distributed and the ideal scenario for the future of the composable enterprise is where all the business capabilities are easily accessible uh, as modular interchangeable building blocks. So I, I use the Lego analogy quite a lot and it's the same thing that each business capability is a Lego block and you should be able to reuse it and put it together to compose a different capability that you need at that point or the business needs at that point. And that is the whole idea of the composable enterprise. However, to achieve this vision of, you know, reusable business building blocks, IT cannot deliver it alone because IT teams in big enterprise organizations simply do not have that sort of a, um, that sort of a capability or capa uh, capacity to deliver, you know, the, the demand that's coming in there. So with the research that we did, we realized that 76% of line of business users actually are either involved or want to be involved or want to find new ways to one, do things faster and enhance their internal digital services. And 54% are very, very frustrated about how challenging it can be to you know, get data and to stitch disparate systems together to achieve a business functionality. So obviously, you know, we, we're looking at a few personas here, we're looking at sales, op, service, HR, but this stands true for any business user who's trying to bring together a vision of their customer or their data together, but that data sits in multiple systems. And this is the problem we are trying to solve in here. Now, obviously, they want to integrate faster and also from where they work. That is, in this case, we're talking about Salesforce. So how awesome would it be to actually be able to directly integrate from Salesforce without having to log into another application or without having to log into, uh, log into another platform to, to view the data and then manually load it up? 
So with this context in mind, let me introduce Milsoft Composer to you. Now Milsoft Composer for Salesforce enables business teams to connect apps and data to Salesforce and automate integrations quickly and easily with clicks, not code. And this is done all inside the Salesforce UI. And this means the Salesforce admins no longer have to wait for IT resources to complete um, their projects. You know, if it's a simple integration, say to NetSuite or Slack or Tableau, which will make their life easy, they can do it themselves all from within the Salesforce UI without having to know MuleSoft, without having to know uh, any coding, and they can just jump right into it and start building integrations as they need uh, to improve whatever experience they're trying to improve, whether it's a customer experience or whether it's gaining a deep insight into the business performance, or if they're trying to automate a you know, manual task within Salesforce. And, Composer allows businesses to access data instantly. So no more wasting time on you know, development resources to, to unlock data. Of course, it allows us to compose a 360 customer view faster. You, know, you can integrate your apps and data to Salesforce um, in case of simple integration scenarios with a library of uh, pre-built connectors and pre-built templates. So it's a, it's a question of finding the right connector and then just configuring it within Salesforce. And then it allows us to automate integrations as well, uh, sometimes to boot productivity, basically by effectively creating uh, effortless connected experiences and, and or by taking the right action when there's a the right data at the right time, all through automation and composer. Obviously the data that we are trying to compose or the, the business uh, problem that we are trying to solve is highly sensitive data. And the reason why integration has always been historically so difficult is because this data has to go through a level of security. It has to be on a scalable platform because data grows. And for most business critical processes, teams need a platform that they can trust. In fact, 90, uh, sorry, 39% of line of business challenges begin with security and compliance issues. So security and compliance is a big, big, uh, top of mind issue, especially where IT teams are concerned when unlocking data. So there is a concern, you know, when, when I'm making a statement like, hey, now admins can connect to your backend systems and, and pull data in. We can't do it randomly or with a, you know, just a built in point to point connection because then we are exposing the business to a potential security breach, breach of standards, breach of compliances, et cetera. So with that is, a, a top of mind issue that we have to keep um, thinking about when we are thinking integration, even though Composer is making it easy. And how do we solve for that? So Composer is built on any point platform and it basically uh, exposes that functionality within Salesforce with, with clicks and codes. It cannot do very complex integration projects, but it is uh, the use case is really for solving simple integration tasks, which the admins can do themselves. So it allows business users to create integrations with governance and, and visibility for IT built in because IT can actually create frameworks and templates which the admin can then use on their own. Uh, and IT can make the connectors available and make sure the connections are secured and the best practices are applied from a compliance reason. Uh, and once that first integration is created, if there's a bigger business use case that comes on board, uh, any point platform is as well integrated, obviously, to then do governance, monitoring, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with those integrations. So it's a seamless experience across both the platforms uh, when we get to more complex use cases. But the more, most important thing is that the business users can integrate confidently with a secured and IT approved solution rather than going rogue and, and, and doing something on their own. So now let's talk about some of the most common use cases for integration that, that Millsoft uh, Composer for Salesforce solves. Now, one of the use cases is about uh, streamlining sales operations. Now, Salesforce admins can effortlessly build automation workflows between Salesforce and say NetSuite to kickstart an order to cash initi um, initiative, or they could improve process visibility and ultimately boost of, uh, operational efficiency across the code to cash process completely. 
Now, a second use case could be uh, around services. So we could elevate customer service by maximizing the service team's productivity and streamlining case management and resolution with real-time data plugged in and automations plugged in using Composer. And, and we don't actually have to wait for a development project to do it for us. The third one could be around uh, team collaboration use cases where uh, you know, we, we now have Slack and, and we are, uh, have connectors to Slack and we could foster team collaboration by sell, um, sharing sales reports or, or say project updates uh, or just you know, sharing data and collaboration assets across cross-functional teams. That has never been so easy before because we could all automate it within Slack or Microsoft Teams. Uh, you know, people could get notification when, when a new sales report or a, uh, has been published or a quote has been updated or maybe an opportunity has been progressed to the next stage. So these are all some, some great collaboration use cases that, that Composer could solve for. And the last one is again, a very important use case that we're touching on is employee experience. Now we know that most organizations, uh, especially with the you know, remote working now, the digital employee experience is extremely important. And we don't want employees to log into multiple apps and multiple systems to do everyday jobs. And hence organizations can actually speed up that employee onboarding for example, by automating and updating employee profile and payroll attributes across workflow, uh, sorry, across Workday, NetSuite, and Salesforce. And then they can use a Slack connector and then promote development programs via Slack. And they could you know, send out notifications and messages uh, automated to the right employee effortly, effortlessly at the right time. So these are some of the most common use cases for Composer, just, just to get our heads around what does it actually mean and, and what could Composer do uh, to solve our problems really from day to day. Now this uh, is an interesting one. So these are some of the resources that I've put together, but I uh, will anyway share the slide with Amit and, and he can post all of these trailhead modules and, and where you can find more information, et cetera. I'm just going to skip over to uh, some of the features that we have that, you know, within Salesforce, what, what all can we do? So remember, this is a very new product and we've started with uh, some very basic features and integration capabilities. But as we go forward, uh, obviously this product will enhance. And also the Composer for MuleSoft, which is the, the full-blown version of Composer on any point platform uh, is supposed to be out GA this um, next quarter. Yeah, so in the second half of the year. So yes. Um, once that is out, obviously it becomes a very powerful tool where admins can hand over, you know, to any point platform developers or even IT teams for bigger projects and not lose the work that's been done. Essentially, we keep it reusable or we, we keep make sure that the governance and the monitoring on what the admins have developed on, on the Salesforce Composer um, is still within our compliance limit and, and still scalable and maintainable and, and all of that good stuff. Right, so talking about um, the design integrations. So first of all, we can, as I said, we can create the integration and logic with clicks directly inside of Salesforce. And we can integrate Salesforce with, uh, Salesforce with external apps or connect between external apps directly uh, and build multiple system workflows um, you know, with two or more apps seamlessly. So that's the idea of Composer. So there's no coding required. It was meant to be an admin tool and hence it is fully configurable. Now, the next one is obviously you're saying, well, how do we connect to external systems? What allows us to not write code and uh, connect to the external system? So that is with pre-built connectors that we have currently for Composer. So some of the connectors, most common connectors are for Workday, obviously for Salesforce. So Salesforce can, um, Composer can be used to do org to org uh, syncing. And I actually uh, have managed to get a demo from one of our marketing teams for this. So I will play that at the end of uh, my presentation and I'm sure you all will find it very interesting. Now, um, yeah, so as I said, we have these pre-built connectors which can help projects start faster because so this library of connectors is available and it enables you to build integrations and create a single view of the customer faster. 
by not having to write code or custom connectors at all. Uh, and it obviously also allows you to verify integrations uh, and, and build confidently uh, by pulling in the right data via real-time data preview uh, features. And that is just one of the things though, so that you can test that your integrations are right and, and before you go into production. And this is the last one, which provides a very basic capability uh, to enjoy some built-in monitoring on all the integrations, get some automatic error alerts so that your team can quickly identify and resolve issues. Obviously the more advanced monitoring and governance features are on the AnyPoint platform, which is due with the next release of Composer. Okay, so with that, I think, this is just an introduction to, to what Composer can do. And I thought it would be best if you could see it um, in person, what Composer can do. And we got a demo from you, from one of our product teams. And this demo talks about a use case uh, for Salesforce org to org integration. And um, with that org to org integration, obviously, uh, you know, um, you can use it with no code environments and you could automate workflows within it. So obviously, you know, promotes our multi-org strategy in there. So if you're ready, and I hope you can see this demo. So before I start this demo, hang on. Could somebody tell me if you can see the demo fine? Yeah, we can see that. All right, great. So let me start playing this. Uh, the voice is not coming. Sorry? The voice is not coming. Ah, so you can't hear it, right. Um, hmm. How do I? Make sure I share the voice. All right, let's try again. Can you hear that now? Yep. All right, great. Hi, I'm Parth, and I'm a product marketer here at MuleSoft. And I'm here to show you how MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce enables you to easily synchronize multiple Salesforce orgs using clicks, not code. Meet Tim. Tim is a sales operations admin at Northern Trail Outfitters, short for NTO. Now, NTO sells outdoor clothing and gear. And recently, to expand their presence, they acquired a small healthy snacks business called Great Divide. We'll call them GD for short. Now, NTO and Great Divide have their own unique Salesforce orgs that currently don't talk to each other. And Tim at NTO, his job is to synchronize these two different Salesforce orgs together. So what does Tim typically do? Well, every week he creates and uploads a CSV file with account leads between the two orgs. And this can be a very time consuming manual and an error prone process. Now, Tim wishes he had other options. So what does he do? He thinks about filing a ticket with IT, but he knows that can take a couple of weeks to fulfill. And since he's not a developer, he doesn't write code to build the integration himself. And this is where MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce comes in. MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce makes it easy for Tim to connect two or multiple different Salesforce orgs together without knowing how to code or waiting on development resources. So let's see how Tim, our business user at Northern Trail Outfitter, builds this automation by himself in minutes. To start, Tim goes to MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce. The MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce app is embedded right within his Salesforce instance. So it's already a user interface that he's familiar with. So let's get started by building out an automation flow. On this screen, Tim has various different Salesforce orgs that he can connect to. So he chooses Great Divide connection since that's where the Great Divide account leads currently sit. Next, he sets the trigger to take place whenever a new account is created in Great Divide. Now, he needs to send the Great Divide account information to NTO. So, he chooses NTO Salesforce instance in this step. 
Now, since Tim also wants the new NTO account to mirror the account details in Grid Divide, he picks a new account record in NTO and ensures the account names in the two Salesforce orgs are exactly the same. He also wants the other account details such as billing state, city, and a custom field, in this case, the Grid Divide record ID, to be brought into NTO in case there are duplicate account names in both instances. He then searches those fields in Grade Divide in order to map those fields to NTO. Lastly, he connects back into Grade Divide Salesforce instance. So the account IDs are synced between the two Salesforce instances. So he chooses Great Divide Salesforce instance, update account with the new NTO ID. And that's it. Let's test it out. Here's a great divide Salesforce instance. Tim creates a new account and he calls it Pacific Crest Outfitters. He adds a billing city of Portland in the state of Oregon, and then he hits save. He then goes back to MuleSoft Composer and waits for the event to trigger. There you go, all the steps are complete. And now Tim goes back to the NTO Salesforce instance to see if it worked. Voila, Pacific Crest Outfitters account has now been created and the billing and state are updated, in, updated as well. And when Tim heads back to Great Divide Salesforce instance and goes into the details, he can see that the NTO ID has been updated. And just like that, Tim, a Salesforce admin, used MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce to automate data from multiple different Salesforce, Salesforce orgs using clicks, not code, and in an experience that he's already familiar with, which is Salesforce. Now, perhaps Tim can start thinking about adding in the Slack connector to his flow so that he can automatically notify his account teams to take actions whenever a new account is synced. And with new connectors rolled out on a monthly basis, the automation and the integrations that you can achieve with MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce are endless. Curious to hear what MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce can do for your company? Reach out to your Salesforce account team. Join our Trailblazer community where we post updates or just read more using the link on your screen. Thanks for tuning in and keep an eye out for more demos. Take care. All right, so that was just a quick, short, sweet demo to show us how we can sync multiple logs to MuleSoft Composer via MuleSoft Composer uh, and how we could um, automate some of the processes in there. Now, what's currently available, as part said, was we have a set of connectors already av available, which is Workday, uh, obviously Salesforce connectors, uh, Twilio, uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack, uh, Stripe, Google Sheets, etc. And we are soon about to launch connectors on Box, Zendex, Z you know, Jira, ServiceNow. And I'm sure all uh, these connectors, the, the roadmap just continues. So there will be um, a, a lot of connectors being rolled out in the future, which will make integrating different systems and different applications within our ecosystem even easier as we go forward. But remember, MuleSoft Composer is a very basic point-to-point -point integration tools. If you're looking to do something advanced like uh, asynchronous event-driven API, or you have a complex uh, integration, 
scenario where you're driving an experience, maybe a mobile experience with a composable customer 360 de degree view from a lot of legacy systems. I wouldn't recommend using uh, the composer at that time because at that time it has to be a, a full-blown integration strategy, probably API led uh, and driven from the AnyPoint org rather than from within Salesforce. So that is then not just an admin project. So Composer, again, just to reiterate what I said in the beginning, Composer is to make life easy for admins for doing basic, simple integration scenarios where maybe they upload something from a Google Sheet every week and, and they could automate that via Composer, or maybe they just have to pull in or, or publish a, a quick data into Tableau and, and Composer could help them connect into Tableauids, or they could just trigger off basic notifications to say sales teams on um, integrating or collaborating on, on opportunities or sales data. And that is where um, the composer comes in. So it is very simple point to point scenarios only uh, for now. The use case was meant to make life easy for business, but it wasn't meant to create shadow IT systems within organizations. Um, so in case of complex integrations or, or where we need to go at a step further from uh, that sort of integration, we need to come back onto integration platforms and any point platforms. Okay, so for that, uh, as part said, Composer for Salesforce went live end of March and the uh, MuleSoft full-blown Composer uh, UI based uh, on any point platform with more advanced features is due the second half of this year. Uh, and with that, I would say thank you for having me and hopefully you found that introduction useful. This was not supposed to be a deep dive session, but uh, I hope that gives you a good idea of the capabilities uh, of what Composer can do and how it can help you in your day-to-day. -day. Thank you. Amy. Now, any Great. questions? I can see some question into the chat window, so let me read out for you. Mm -hmm. okay. So the question, it is possible to create and publish SFDC custom web services? No, not yet. And uh, there is another question. Can we use Mules of Composer to subscribe to event from the external system? No, as I said, that's a, a platform events and that would require you to go on any point platform. Okay. How it handle last data volume and can it be scheduled or always at real time? Uh, I don't think it can be scheduled. I might be wrong. <laughs> um, large data volumes, I believe the same principles apply because it is, if you're using Salesforce data, uh, the same principles of your LDB apply uh, because it's reading data from essentially the Salesforce databases. If your data is external, uh, then again, you look at the same principles that if you're syncing with the Salesforce org, do you have the right indexes? Uh, is your uh, parent-child relationship ratio fine? So not more than 10,000 child uh, to a single account or to a single parent account, et cetera. There's another question. For both facing between two Salesforce org, do we need Composer on both doors? Uh, Potentially, well, no, you could create uh, a, you could do it another way. You don't need Composer, right? So you, you could do uh, an integration on the other org to just, uh, you know, pull in data from, from this because Composer is essentially just a tool for you to build integration, but underlying you will still use APIs uh, your SOAP and REST APIs, et cetera, the underlying technology remains the same. Is this available in developer? It should be, yes. But once the license is available for production. Okay, pretty much this one, most of the question. Let me allow a uh, participant to unmute themselves if they have any question. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any question. Hey, Emily, uh, can you tell us where it fits in the order of execution? I haven't thought about it, but obviously I would assume that Composer would trigger off uh, integration based on 
a specific data change or the trigger uh, event that you know uh, you would configure into the composer so hopefully if if it's not too complex whatever your trigger event is should decide the order of execution if if the event is in a chain of events so as to say but because it's an integration uh to it 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 does depend on what the trigger event is good thanks hey uh, uh, thanks for great session sorry. just uh, one question uh, uh when you connect with the non salesforce uh, application uh, with the uh, uh mule soft composer will it uh, count against your uh, salesforce api limit ah that's a great question um yes because it's still making callouts it should but i can check on that and get back to you that's a great question cool thank you